Once upon a time there lived an old ship, so old that all its sides were rusty and ached mercilessly, and its voice became so hoarse that it could no longer hum. The entire crew loved their ship very much, constantly repairing it, repainting it, sewing up holes, and cleaning Slow pipes. Over the past three years he has only gone to sea once, and only for a short distance. Just walked along the coast from one port to another to transport some cargo. They didn't strain him too much, but they couldn't Slow part with him set. either. Although the strict naval authorities have long been talking about its decommissioning, he was very worried about this and often cried at night. Therefore, when the sailors came in the morning, yesterday's patches were again covered with rust, and some even fell off completely. The sailors did not understand anything and again mended, patched and tinted his posides. Most of all the ship loved the captain, almost as old as himself. The captain had a bad heart and was constantly taking some kind of pills because recently he had some kind of grief which he never spoke about on board the ship, not wanting to upset him even more. One night, when only the sailors on watch remained on the ship, he felt some movement in his hold. Looking there with his inner eye, he saw hordes of rats that were somehow moving too quickly towards the exit. Then he realized that this was the end because everyone knows that the rats leave the ship before its death. He had one acquaintance, a rat, who gave him less trouble than others. He asked her to gnaw through the ropes and make sure that the sailors left the ship at least for a while, although he knew that this was almost impossible. There were two sailors on the ship and the rats, after consulting, did not find anything better than to throw one of them overboard. The second one began to run around the deck in a panic, screaming, calling for help, throwing all the life preservers into the water, and then he himself jumped to save his drowning comrade. At this moment, the ship, whose ropes had already been chewed by rats, slowly began to move away from the shore. His plan was to move further out to sea and drown himself there. He turned on the engines himself, set the course himself and gave himself the command full speed ahead. He learned all this over many years of sailing with people. Both sailors looked in bewilderment at the retreating ship, not daring to swim close to it, since they could be sucked in by the propellers and they would die. And the ship was rapidly picking up speed. The salty wind, mixed with splashes, whipped him on the sides and a certain feeling of freedom filled him from the hold to the tip of the mast. The sea was calm and gentle. The stars in the dark sky formed like an arrow, showing the ship the way. Having reached almost the middle of the sea, it seemed to him that he was ready to turn off the engine and go to the bottom. But then suddenly, out of nowhere, a school of dolphins swam up to him and began to ask for help. They squealed so much that the ship could hardly understand that some child was in trouble not far away. He, of course, abandoned his selfish plans and hurried to the aid of a stranger. The dolphins showed him the way, and the star arrow seemed to confirm it. Suddenly the ship saw something like land ahead. Either a small island, or an atoll, or just a piece of land sticking out in the middle of the sea. The dolphins said that this was exactly the place where they called him. Swimming closer to the shore, he saw that a small boy was lying near the water and was almost not breathing. The most important thing now was to drag the baby on board the ship. But how can this be done if the dolphins have no hands, and even more so the ship? Dolphins, wise animals, turned the boy on his back and carefully lowered him into the water. One of the dolphins carefully swam under his back and, supported on the sides by a couple more dolphins, hurried to the ship, which, because of the shallows, could not come close to the shore. Without thinking twice, the ship lowered the boat into the water, into which the dolphins transferred the boy, and lifted it aboard again. Someone had forgotten a warm blanket in the boat, which came in handy just now. The ship quickly turned around and started the engines, which had not yet cooled down, and rushed back to its friends who remained on the shore, to its captain. He hoped that people would save the boy if he got there in time. 
The return journey seemed three times faster to him, and now the lights of their native port began to flicker in the distance. The ship sounded its horn for joy, and what is most surprising, the sound turned out to be loud and clear, as it was in its first years of life. Out of amazement, the ship now sounded its horn constantly in order to enjoy the heavenly music again and again. The closer he came to the shore, the more clearly he saw people running along the pier in confusion, waving their arms, shouting something. There was a strange expression on all their faces, as if they had all seen something strange and incomprehensible. Suddenly, among all the faces, he saw his captain, with tears streaming down his cheeks. What happened? Is it really because of me that there is such a commotion? The ship thought. He moved and immediately to him. 